Atul Kumar sir, who will be discussing few uh, pearls on when one should use ICG and OCT angiography in CSC choroiditis. We can take one or two questions from the audience meanwhile. I think what the cases uh, really show is the importance of the choroidal vascular hyperpermeability. And I think that's a very important feature that you could see on the ICG. And you should not just focus on the thickness of the choroid. There is no cutoff value, really, to tell you that this is a pachychoroid. But there are a couple of important elements. One is the choriocapillaries ischemia as and the choroidal vascular hyperpermeability on the ICG. Yesterday, we also discussed the importance of vortex vein imaging in ICG. And you can actually see the vortex vein engorgement in patients who have pachychoroid disease. And this can be imaged on wide field ICG. And the presence of vortex vein engorgement goes also in favor of pachychoroid spectrum of disease. Thank you so much for having invited me, Anirudh. And uh, it's a pleasure to be in your, uh, you, those mistakes, retinal mistakes which you make, and how to you know, look at them, how we make those mistakes, and how to rectify them. So I'll also be discussing about OCT and ICG, ICG angiography in uh, CSC and choroiditis. Mostly CSC I'll be talking. So. Now, we should know that OCTA measures the blood flow dependent on the vascular cell movement. That's basically those RBCs moving. While the FAICG is totally independent of the cell movement, it depends on the flow of the blood plasma. It has nothing to do with the cells. That's very important to understand between OCTA and ICG or FA. On OCT angiography in CSC, we observe, as we've already said, that there is a hypo and hyperperfusion. There's a mortal fluorescence there on OCT angiography in the deeper layers as you cut the sec sections. And what has been seen is that there are many hot spots in late phase ICGA which are in close proximity to the ischemic areas on octa. So the octa hyperperfusion areas or uh, decreased perfusion areas, or low flow areas correspond to hot spots in ICGA. Hyperperfusion leads to increase, as you said, hy hydrostatic pressure. This is basically the pathogenesis of CSC within the fenestrated capillaries. And this increased hydrostatic pressure contributes to the leakage, the chronic uh, hypoxic damage, and also to the disintegration of the RP and then to the fluid in the subretinal space, leading on to chronic CSC. So probably when we need to do it is when the CSC starts becoming chronic, and you have areas of hype, uh, you know, there's a hot spot over there with mortal fluorescence on, on, on uh, ICGA. You see this hot spot over here, and there's a mortal fluorescence. This hot spot usually corresponds to the area of uh, low perfusion or decrease or ischemic area on the octa. So they basically what I, I want to say is that uh, uh, this uh, ischemic area is the hot spot, and that's the time probably when we can think of doing a low flow and PDT. And as has been said that uh, besides uh, other uh, indications for getting an octa and ICGAs, in cases of chronic CSC, because they often are part of the pachychoroid spectrum. And pachychoroid spectrum, on the other end, leads to what is popularly known as polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy, which is very pro pro predominant in our country, which was probably not picked up because of not we didn't have the kind of imaging techniques which we have now. And uh, we are also looking at it more carefully. So Asian countries are more involved, and definitely India is one of them. And uh, it's been seen in Japan, Singapore, other countries also, but India has also been picking up. And so we see this area of uh, 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 hyperfluorescence, a well-defined area, 
along with a lot of mortal flows. Since the case of chronic CAC over time, and then uh, when you do the ICG, you can actually pick up the polyp, a very large polyp over there. And the polyp, sometimes the tiny polyps may not be picked up, but the octa also, besides ICG, the octa is also picked up the polyp. And these PDs, PDs correspond to some extent to the polyp, and you have this double air sign, which is because of the uh, branching vascular network. So getting a octa done as well as ICG can be a useful test for a case of chronic CSC because you then have to intervene. Uh, there's fluid, subretinal fluid, there's double air sign, there's presence of a polyp, all this will contribute to getting a anti vegf as pr probably as well as a low flow and PDT done. So this is a, another case of chronic CSC, which is actually on doing the ICG, you pick up the lesion. So the, the role of ICG is immense and uh, FA ICG can be done. The ICG picks up the polyps clearly, the FA doesn't do that. And you can see the branching vascular network also. So these multiple PDs which are there, which are often said to be part of the p lesion of the polyp and with subretinal fluid. And of course, uh, so in serpiginous choroiditis, it is said that uh, the presence of lesions in the chorocapillaries uh, th that flow voids, uh, it, what they say is that the, and the, uh, the EF imaging shows the activity, the autofluorescent imaging shows the activity of the choroiditis lesion and it corresponds to the hypofluorescence, it corresponds to the hypoflu hypofluorescence lesion, the hypofluorescence of the low, uh, low, fluorescence, low fluorescence lesion on the, uh, on the OCTA. So therefore, the, what they say is that chorocapillaries is the site of Serpiginous choroiditis is not RP. So because there's absence of RP lesion, so the chorocapillaries are getting affected in the in serpiginous choroiditis, which correspond to the AFI. So this is what I'd like to say, and this is an article published in Ophthalmology Retina. So CSE gets understood very well, as well as the serpiginous choroiditis. Uh, there is an article also by uh, the PGI group, Professor uh, Vishali Gupta, Anirudh, and everybody, which also said that chorocapillaries are the primary site of uh, affection in case of serpiginous choroiditis. Thank you very much.